Hey there guys, this is Obsidian Chill. We've got another video for you today. This is a continuation of my updated in-depth guide series. We're on to electric. As per usual, you'll find the pinned comment, which will have timestamps for each relevant section of the guide. So if you're looking for just the DPS side in terms of single target AOE or the precision side, you'll be able to find that timestamp in the description and in the comment section. As well, because I've already released my uh, everything you need to know about healer's guide, that w section of this guide for electric healing will be linked to that video. So in the same thing in the description, in the pinned comment, you'll see a link to a separate video. Uh, just to save you know time in the video, there's no point in repeating what I'm already going to say in that video. So you can find that. That's a m it goes into a much greater detail than I would here for electric healing. So take a look at that. So take care guys and enjoy. So with respect to uh, a skill point allocation for electric, it's going to be somewhat typical as you would expect for any kind of might DPS. Super powered spec, critical attack chance is maxed, critical attack damage is maxed, and then put everything else into might and power. Iconic wise, there's nothing in this particular build, but in general you're going to want robot psychic, you're going to want heat vision for a single target, and you're going to want, um, yeah, just those two. Super speed, just take the movement innate for some extra power return. You all, for the melee build, you're going to need Whirling Dervish. For weapons, just whatever you spec. Could be any weapon, really. Rifle for single target taps or anything else, really, for AoE. And then put everything else into health. For gear, your weapon's always going to have Blast Adapter. Head mod's always going to have Supercharge Circuit Breaker 3. Neck mod's always going to have less killing might. Back mod, there's really no back mod that's beneficial for electric. You've got Accelerate Tesla Ball, you've got Flux, Biocap, and Arc Lightning. I mean, Arc Lightning's already got three second cooldown. Tesla Ball, you'll see that I use it in my precision side, uh, precision side, sorry, uh, because of just the timing. But other than that, I mean, you don't need Flux or Biocap for DPS. Chest mods, two situations. Either if you're using Scrap the Soul Cloak, use penetrating strikes if you're not using scrap the soul cloak use extend supercharge because it's all about earning that uh, circuit breaker as fast as possible and not as often as possible leg mods nothing foot mods gonna be dashing combos for the melee on uh, whirling dervish head mods gonna be max damage face mods gonna be might uh, in terms of trinkets, technically the best is going to be a father and mother box, uh, but they are part of the new episode 41 drops, so not that anyone has them before, or you purchase them on the vendor for like 700 source marks. But uh, Nightmare Bat's a good alternative, but you should be ideally looking towards the mother box and father box. They are about the same. Mother box is technically a little bit higher in certain situations, but I mean you can't go wrong with either one of them. Then you got your DPS trinket, orbital spy drop. Now in terms of artifacts, I'll Electric does have a varied approach to them. Uh, Transformation, Strategist, and either Gemini would be kind of like the go-to. But for melee, it's going to be Quizzlet instead of Strategist card, which you'll see. You could also use Scrap the Soul Cloak instead of Gemini if you're not in those gem span groups and just keep earning uh, Circuit Breaker as often as possible. You can mix in Linear's Amulet in situations. Electric's a little bit on the high power side, but uh, I mean you can certainly I mean you can use Amulet on technical and any power set to increase it. Solar profile, you need that for single target. So, you do need like five or six artifacts for electric might DPS to be able to do it properly. And then, technically, there's Dead King for, you know, the single target swaps and supply drops on Philosopher's Stone. So, it's just a lot of artifacts for might DPSing. In terms of augments, there's no particular augments for episode 41 House of Legends. So, you're just using the Flashpoint ones. And then you've got the uh, Origin augments, will all be might. These increased by five levels, so if you are just tuning into House of Legends, 297 was the previous max, now it's 302, so just make sure that you uh, make sure these are maxed out. And then technically, this will be the first guy that I talk about allies. We don't have legendary allies yet, so that's why I don't have a, a second support one, because I mean, there's there's no... It's not worth it. You're just wasting your ally favor. You might as well save it. Cyborg is going to be the best for damage. It also has the best passive. So definitely Cyborg. I've covered this in videos. is the best one to get. 
House of Legends bot is also very handy for electric because arc lightning stuns pretty much anything in terms of zero willpower. So even as a DPS or healer, you can take advantage of this because you're going to get power back every time you stun an enemy. And electric has plenty of stuns, so it's just uh, that's a handy one to have. On general, if you're a controller, you would have it, but House of Legends is very cheap too because it's a rare, so it's it's not too much of an investment, and it can uh, you get you get power back in every single stun. There's no internal cooldown, so that's pretty much the only two allies I would run at this point. Um, Oracle Bot's not worth it. Flash isn't worth it. Zoom isn't worth it. Um, which one am I forgetting? Calculator Bot isn't worth it. So it's just, I mean, you can have them if you want, but it's a, it's just a waste of. You know, an XP and investment and catalyst at this point until we get some new allies. So let's jump over to loadouts and rotation. So for electric, uh, uniquely, it works a little bit different in terms of splitting rules. So what I mean by that is it's easiest to show with uh, technically Tesla Ball and Electrogenesis. It, it works for Arc Lightning as well, but it's a little bit harder to show that one. So if Electrogenesis, pay attention to the first uh, two targets here, this one and this one, in terms of the damage. So you see all the other ones in the background, the other ads are ticking for like 500 non-crit, uh, 1200, but those first two allies are consistently clearing for like six, seven Ks. That's because uh, Electrogenesis doesn't split on the first two targets, it splits afterwards. So that means for these six adds right here, I'm getting split damage, which is why it was so low, like around 1k. But the first two targets, I'm getting the full damage from the entire duration. Uh, Arc Lightning works similar. It's just how it splits, because basically Arc Lightning, as you can see, it doesn't just to hit one add. Like, so if I do like a different power, like uh, for example, let's get out of combat here. And let's just put it on like Shockwave or something. So if I do Shockwave, it hits, uh, I mean, obviously it's a cone, but it hits everything naturally there. All at once. But Arc Lightning hits one target and then jumps to all the others. So that's how it doesn't split the same as other powers, because technically the game's only registering it on the one hit, which is why it doesn't split, but then it bounces to every other target to, to damage it. So that's why you get pretty much near equal damage because technically it's, it's not one hit it's one hit then the next hit then the next hit then the next hit if that makes any sense a little bit harder to show an example for arc lightning and then you got tesla ball the reason why tesla ball is a lot different is because if i go um i guess it's not uh showing me my supercharge so let me just fix that i'll have to do supercharge out then so if I do like Arc Lightning, you can see even though Arc Lightning hit multiple targets, I'm getting one recover for 48 supercharge. So each time I use Arc Lightning, I'm getting 48 supercharge back. Same thing if I do like Electrogenesis, that even though it's a 12 second dot, I'm only getting that one initial burst of supercharge. We'll wait for this to tick. Now, if I use Tesla Ball, each hit of Tesla Ball is granting me supercharge. So this was Arc Lightning, this was Electrogenesis, and then one, two, three, four, five, six ticks of Tesla Ball gave me six times the amount of supercharge normally I would get. That's that's how Tesla Ball works. A doesn't split, like, similar to Arc Lightning, because when I use Tesla Ball, it's hitting one, one target at a time. So it's, or multiple targets like that, but it, it's technically, it's not considered one hit, it's considered multiple hits of the same ability. So just like how like Arc Lightning jumps to different targets, that, and that's why it doesn't follow the same splitting rules, same thing as Tesla Ball. Since it's hitting one target at a time rap, in rapid succession, it's con considering that non-splitting because it's different hits. Even though those other abilities work similar to that, same with thing, that's why it works with a supercharge like that. So because each hit of Tesla Ball I'm getting supercharged from, as opposed to just using a, a typical dot, which is going to be just one hit of supercharge. So that's why it's very beneficial. Well, pretty much every single AOE armory or any kind of AOE situation, you should always have Tesla Ball on. Uh, single target Tesla Ball is not that great. So yes, you do get the damage from it, but Tesla Ball is a lot weaker on single target. Just because obviously it's meant for AOE. So that's why you're going to see plenty of single targets. Some, if you have single target with AOE, like say like first boss of Trigon, great. You're going to run um, Tesla Ball. 
but say you're running like FOSS 2 Elite, last boss with um, Ivatar Meta, not much sense to have Tesla Ball because, yeah, you get a little bit extra supercharge, but nowhere near as much because it's based on single target. So at that point, you run like Electrogenesis, something better for single target, pure single target. So I just want to explain that just because a lot of people don't understand uh, splitting rules in DC Universe Online. It's, just, it's like why Heat Vision got changed. There's a bunch of other stuff. So um, it's, it's a little bit harder of a concept to grasp and teach. But just be aware that Electric has always not followed um, the, well, I wouldn't say correct, but the, the typical uh, norm for splitting rules. Arc Lightning is very different. Electrogenesis is, is somewhat different. And then Tesla Ball is very different because there's no other power in the entire game that acts like Tesla Ball in terms of giving you multiple supercharge back. And that's why, even without Scrap the Soul Cloak and Gemini Spam, that's why Electric earns uh, Circuit Breaker so quickly because of that, using Tesla Ball and AoE. So, just wanted to cover that in its own little section. So in terms of electric melee, it's not 100% required. You can do perfectly fine damage with uh, any of the AoE range rotations. Um, this one I'm focusing on Dervish and being melee based. This is more for burst damage, for uh, Omniverse content where things are going to die quickly. Because there's absolutely, if you're running like older content or even like QE stuff like content we're over geared for, there's no point of like setting up like Electrocute and Electrogenesis dots. Like it's just... There, you're not going to get the full damage out of it because things are going to die way too quickly. You've got all these pet damage, you've got allies, you've got supply drops, you've got EOG procs, all this kind of stuff. It's just not beneficial. You you want to have something that's more burst. So Dervish, you got burst. Arc, uh, Arc Lightning is, is burst. We'll take Blast is burst. Uh, Electric uh, Static Bomb is going to be burst. So this one's going to be not a dot heavy one. It's, this is going to be focused on two things. For one, I've got Quizlet and uh, the Gemini in here, so that's why the parser damage is going to be a little bit lower on this, because this performs better in content. In content, every time you're using um, Circuit Breaker, you're getting, um, I can show it here actually, what Quizlet will actually do. So we'll pop here just to get in combat, just to summon. So we've got Quizlet. So Quizlet itself will attack, it's got basic damage, similar to Grim, it just does passive damage, but if you're using a power, uh, like saying when you use Voltaic, you saw a, a burst. So that was Mega Blast on each single add. Uh, so when you use the Super Power Quizlet, will cast a powerful attack, hits up to eight targets with a five second internal cooldown. So that's that's what that damage was. Now if I use Circuit Breaker, actually we'll take off Gemini just so that you don't see the Gemini procs. So if I use Circuit Breaker now, all this damage, I'm getting eight hits on every single target. So yeah, it's it's not uh, going to be massive, you know, OP damage, but uh, you know, essentially, I just got a free each time I use a supercharge, I just got a free 100k damage out of that. And with how often you're using uh, Circuit Breaker, like it's it also um, splits a little bit different too. That's just because there's targets. So if I go over here, summon it again. Same thing if I use Voltaic on three. Now I'm looking at like 13k per, and then if I use Circuit Breaker on this example, you know, those ticks are ba it's basically free damage. And that's continual because, you know, in these groups and content, you're going to have Circuit Breaker continually. Or like for, same thing for like a strategy card proc. The, the difference here is that it's front loaded damage. So I could hit I could hit Quizlet and I get Circuit Breaker and I got Neo G proc instead of um, Strategy Card. So every time I hit a supercharge, which is gonna be very often in content, because of those gem spam metas, I'm now going to get the upload of front damage of Quiz of uh, Quizlet. I'm also getting the one percent passive supercharge. So you're saying, oh, why aren't you running Tesla? Well, I already, I already have a passive uh, Mega Blast grants the player 1% supercharge. So every time I get Mega Blast, I'm already getting that supercharge regen from Quizlet. And, the, I mean, the might stats are similar to, to a strategy card anyway. So, I mean, if I'm in content where things are going to die quicker, there's no point in me using strategy card because I'm going to get maybe like one or two procs of strategy card and then it's going to be done. 
So I might as well have something that's actually going to be beneficial, which is Quizlet. So I, I know I'm asking some players to run a completely new artifact. And I mean, you could run Strategic Card perfectly fine. Uh, it's not to say Strategic Card sucks in this rotation. It's just that Quizlet will do more potential damage because of its effects. So, I, I mean, I've tested this. I've, I've run this rotation in all content for Omniverse and on test server on here. So, I mean, I've run against plenty of good players and plenty of good DPS. And these are perfectly fine. Because we're getting gem spam, I can take advantage of Circuit Breaker twice. I'm getting the EOG proc, and I'm getting the Quizlet damage, and I'm having a burst loadout. And the other advantage here with this Dervish, I know um, if you're not super speed, you can kind of uh, ignore this. But if, I, if I'm using Dervish, even if the ads are too far away, I can just go strictly into Arc, Voltaic Bass, and uh, Electrostatic Bomb. So if the ads get out of range, I've still got a perfectly fine rotation before I can jump in and do Dervish and cancel with dashing combos. So it's just, I'm trying to explain the rotation here from a point of view you can understand. So, because you say, oh, well, you're going to miss damage because you're going to miss uh, ads with Dervish. Well, then I could just rotate between the three before I get in a range back to use Dervish again. So if you aren't super speed and can't do this, then it's just a simpler other change of rotation. So then it's going to be Arc, Tesla, Voltaic, and Electrostatic Bomb. And then even then, you don't even need Quizlet. You could take Quizlet off, put Strategy Card on. You still got I, Gemini, Prox. Same thing. That's why there's so many rotations you're going to see with Heat Vision. I don't like Heat Vision for two reasons. One, it's completely parser bias. It's just like nature DPSing. If you nature DPS on the sparring turret, it's like, oh my god, nature's so OP. Look at this amazing damage. That's because you're in a perfect situation where all the dots are going to tick on the heads the exact same time. So it's just you're per, you're setting up yourself to look good because of how the sparring targets are and their limited health and everything. They're not going to move. They're not going to die. Everything like that. You're not going to miss damage. So it's something where I refer to it as partial bias. It just inflates the damage. Same thing with heat vision. So if I use heat vision here with Swallow to Fire, I'm getting the perfect ticks. I'm getting the perfect explosion damage. It's going to hit all, all eight adds. I'm getting the perfect burning ticks on all eight targets, which can't continually. You know, that's not going to happen in actual content. You know, you're going to miss the explosion on ads that are, are flying around or not a range. You're not going to get the burning ticks on everything, etc. So that's why that's why heat vision uh, looks so good on sparring targets compared to actual content. Plus, you're you're in a fixed um, uh, you know, your mobility is lessened. Plus, it limits your artifact combos. So that means I'd have to run Swollen Amplifier. So that means I'm con you know you're constantly artifact swapping for uh, Circuit Breaker or Quizlet, or Scrap a Soul Cloak, or you're running like a strategy card, or you're running a Lair's Amulet, stuff like that. So I'd rather not be super limited by two, because you're going to have always have at least, um, I mean, it's really hard to artifact swap strategy card because of the animation with it, so you're going to leave that on if you're running that. So it's just it's awkward. That's why I don't run Heat Vision. So for this loadout, don't even need to be melee. It's just going to be ranged. I guess we'll summon Psychic here. So ignore the first part because I'll be without Psychic. And then with this one, it's pretty much just straight 1, 2, 3, 4. And then just waiting for Tesla to come off cooldown. So my, sec part, my second parser should be in the millions. Yep. 1.6 mil. And that's all it is. So perfectly fine. You don't, you don't need to use Dervish. Uh, it all depends on the situation. You're completely fine with, with range. And just use electrostatic bomb for the extra burst damage and a little bit of dot ticks. So perfectly viable. You don't need to use dervish, but I'm going to show you that rotation anyway. So you saw the rotation without super speed. Now I'll show you the one with super speed. So let's jump over on the sparkets and actually show you that rotation here.
Okay, so I mixed in a couple of circuit breaker Eye of the Gemini rotations as you can see it. So you're pretty much always going to be just over a million. Um, and then with the circuit breaker rotations, then you're going up to like 1.7 mil, 1.6 mil. A little, a little bit different because this is 10 seconds, so you're kind of spilling into the other parsers. But the same thing, like 1.6 mil, 1.7 mil, with like 35% crit rates. And that's not including all the other damage you get from Quizlet on multiple ads. That's not including the other Eye of the Gemini damage you can get from all the other players. So that's why this, this rotation will be weaker on sparring targets because I'm, I'm not getting any additional damage, but it's in actual raid content, that's going to be through the roof. And that's what keeps Electric Melee competitive with, you know, even Gadget's Prec. I mean, uh, in FOSS 2, towards the end, I mean, my Electric Signal target will fall behind, but in uh, FOSS 2, I've been completely competitive with Gadget's Might, Gadget's Prec DPS uh, on AoE. And then, obviously, I fall behind a single target. <laughs> but uh, with the Circus Breaker Bram, with Quizlet, uh, you remain really competitive on AoE and just fall behind on the typical spots. I mean, it's not like I'm saying Electric is the best DPS in the game or anything like that. Uh, it's just that there's ways to make it uh, top tier. just depends on the actual content, the rotation, and how uh, whether or not you have Gemini Spam or not. So for pure single target, in terms of uh, spec-wise, you just have to make sure that you're taking Robot Psychic and Heat Vision. Don't worry about these two, they're just left over from a different spec. Uh, Amazon Deflection I just have because of FOSS 2 Elite, so you know, technically don't need that either. Everything else will stay the exact same in terms of spec-wise. So for loadouts, you're looking at Amplified Heat Vision, Ionic Drain, Voltaic Boat, Bolt, be nice if I could uh, properly pronounce words. And uh, Tesla Blast, because I get reminded all so often <laughs> when I mis mispronounce things in chat. Robot Psychic and Circuit Breaker. And then artifact wise, you're running Soul Amplifier, Strategist Card, and Transformation Card. The only substitution there in terms of like Gemini or Linares Amulet would be Strategist Card. You still want Transformation Solar, but technically you could drop Strat if you wanted to. Uh, this one is more of, uh, you do have, do have the dots from Voltaic, and obviously from Heat Vision and Ionic Drain, Tesla Blast is Burst, so you do have the option if you need to, to drop that one. And rotation-wise, it's really just going to be left to right. Uh, Tesla Blast, uh, I'll, sh I'll show an example with Circuit Breaker, but the reason why Tesla Blast is on there for pure single target is because when you have Circuit Breaker, which is going to be often in terms, especially on Circuit Breaker spam groups, um, to be able to hit Tesla Blast and crit in raids, I routinely see 100k each hit. So every time I hit Tesla Blast is 100k damage, and that's usually on the low side. Because in content, you're going to have like buff trolls, augments, and stuff like that. things that I can't show here uh, on parsing. But uh, that's why it's there in terms of any other like dot. I mean, technically, you could like have like Electrodensis dots or some kind of dot on it. But really, I'd rather have Tesla Blast for that burst damage when I'm using like a Supply Drop or Circuit Breaker. So let's jump over and show you the rotation.
Okay, so you get the idea there. Let me just get robot psychic to stop attacking. I showed the last couple of parses with Circuit Breaker because, I mean, Electric Signal Target is nothing to write home about uh, at all. Uh, electric Signal Target is designed to be kept up with Circuit Breaker because Circuit Breaker is 12 second cooldowns, 55% damage boost. Um, it, there's so many gem span groups nowadays that you can literally earn. Like if you're doing like a couple healers with like two or three supercharges each, you can pretty much earn a Circuit Breaker off cooldown. I mean, that's not typical in like your regular pub group from LFG, but any kind of like pre-made group or like damage group or end game content group, they're always going to have gem spam healers depending on the content. Like it might not be like the max elite stuff, but you know, QE for a perfect example like that. Uh, I've seen groups where QE, you can literally hit a cool, you literally hit circuit breaker off cooldown for 12 seconds for the entire raid with, uh, with the right amount of supercharged spam. So when you're doing that, then you're jumping up into like competitive single target damage because you're always going to be on that buff. So then even myself without augments, without like nitro, without a compound or without a buff troll, I'm seeing an 80 K single target. And then in a raid, I'm going to have all those buffs plus circuit breaker Then I'm looking at into like towards like the nineties and the mills or mill plus on single target. So that's where electric remains competitive on single target because like you saw without the, without circuit breaker, you're sitting in like, you know, mid sixties, like high fifties, which is not good. That is definitely near bottom tier single target, but that's just because, you know, that's just how electric works. I mean, either you get a Tesla blast crit or you don't, either you get like a plenty of dot crits or you don't, you got heat vision and ion drain for finisher combos. It's just electric single targets awkward in the sense that, uh, it just, I mean, it works, but it only works because of circuit breaker, if that makes sense. I mean, rage, rage is the same concept. I mean, rage single target is nothing to write home about and even the range damage. But when you mix in berserk, then you have competitive single target damage because you, had, you rely on the supercharge instead of like like a power set like gadgets or fire where the bait or even celestial uh those or light i mean plenty of examples mental i mean you got plenty of single target powers that don't rely on a supercharge to do super well but then you've got power sets like electric which rely on the supercharge to do similar so that's why it's very crucial to have circuit breaker up so to have like strap a soul cloak to switch and like uh, make sure you have Gemini spam everything, go into groups, go into raids with full supercharge, etc. That's where you're gonna get the uh, to maintain. You're not gonna be like you're not gonna beat like a gadgets prec or something like that on single target. Depending, I mean, unless you have spam for the entire raid, but at least you're not gonna fall that much behind on single target because you have circuit breaker to make up for it. So let's jump over and show the, this was pure single target. We'll show the one that has a little bit AOE mix. Okay, so with this one, very similar to the pure single target, you're still gonna have a, a spec for heat vision and robot sidekick. And once again, don't worry about those two or just take Amazon if you need that for FOSS to lead or a similar raid. Now in terms of loadouts, it does change to a little bit AOE. So now we have Tesla Ball. We start off with that. Doesn't matter if you don't have the PI for the very first initial rotation, it's fine. Then we do Heat Vision, Ionic Drain, Arc Lightning, and Robot Psychic. So this covers pretty much any kind of situation where there's any sort of, of ads, like Trigon First Boss or or um, uh, like First Boss and Foss 2 Elite on like the Prime Assassin, even into like FF. Flash like Gorilla Grodd or on Brainiac when the Brainiac adds so any kind of thing on AOE you're gonna have the extra supercharge regen from Tesla Ball and then on splitting damage you get the the extra splitting damage on Arc Lightning and you got Heat Vision Ionic Drain so this is pretty much your go-to one for any sort of AOE on single target so it's gonna do less damage here on the sparring target because it's there's no AOE but in terms of when you're actually in a raid and has content then this will be the go-to rotation for electric so we'll show you just what the rotation looks like on the Spartan target.
Okay, so that's going to be the rotation there. Uh, where I start right here. So yeah, like I said before, it's as expected. You're going to be like mid 50s sometimes with the right crits, 42%. You'll get up to the 60s. But the difference is that that's on one target. You would never use Tesla Ball and Arc Lightning on one single on one target. That's just a waste of powers. But then when we jump over to three targets, then I'm essentially doubling my damage. I'm going from like 90 uh, to a mil. So I'm getting like you know 500,000, 50k damage a second on single target, and then with three targets, I'm getting a million. So you're almost doubling your damage by having those additional targets for Arc Lightning and Tesla Ball to hit. And you saw how fast I regen my supercharge from like half to, um, to basically full with the, the Tesla Ball as well. So that's why any kind of AoE damage on the boss fights, which are plenty. I mean, there's, it's rare to have a pure single target fight in the game. It's very limited. Usually there's always kind of ad, uh, boss fights or with ads. And especially with like Inner Sanctum coming up, you're going to have like uh, our custodian with all him with himself and all the other dads. You're going to have the second boss fight with the, I forget the, what the name is, it's like the mech uh, with all those ads. Um, Brother Eye, technically single target, so that's why you bring both. But like I said, don't use this on pure single target. That's what the other one's for. This one's with any sort of AoE. Okay, so for arranged AOE loadout, uh, this is one that's going to be uh, very common. I think this goes back to like Gotham City Zoo or even before that in terms of DLC. So this this rotation has been out for a number of years. Uh, the only main difference you may see in some other people run or in other videos is heat vision. Uh, I don't run heat vision on AOE for a couple of reasons. One, I like the mobility. Two, Heat vision uh, acts more on parsers. It, it's kind of got some parser bias because of, you get like the perfect burning die, you get the perfect explosion. So, I mean, it, it looks higher on parsers, but in content, that's not necessarily always the case. And thirdly, you can't run soul amplifier. There's no spot for it. Uh, you would get more damage overall if you kept strategy card on for AoE because this is a dot based loadout. You get obviously you got transformation card because of the dots itself. And then you've got either Gemini for all the extra damage you're going to get from using a Circuit Breaker. So if you're in like a gem span group, then you're going to get tons of Supercharge. If not, then you could be running Scrap the Soul Cloak, so you can always get it. And even then, you've got Quizlet, which does some extra damage as well. So you got Quizlet instead of either Gemini if you want to uh, be in that situation where you're not going to use your Supercharge as often. But when you do, you get multiple hits on eight targets. So there's plenty of other options you should be running instead of Heat Vision. It's just not necessary. Um, even for like the little bit increase you get on parsers, you're going to lose overall damage in raids because of the situations I mentioned. Because you're going to have to constantly swap out transformation for uh, Gemini and everything else, and some people don't like artifact swapping, so no reason to want heat vision on this AoE one. So for this, uh, we start with Electrogenesis because uh, it does not require PI, and it doesn't split on the first two targets. So say... There's a group of uh, ads coming up, you pop Electrogenesis, then the tank pulls them, it's going to spread the dot from Electrogenesis to the other allies, So because it puts that damage aura on them. So it just basically sets up free damage, so that's why I always start with Electrogenesis, and then basically go into Arc, test the ball, Voltaic Blast, and then basically then you're going back to Arc, Voltaic, and Electrocute, and kind of repeat, etc. So you're always using the three same, and then depending on when Electrogenesis and Electrocute come off cooldown, because they're both 12 seconds. So you'll see it in the rotation. But like I said, you can technically run any number of artifacts depending on the situation. But at least in this one, we'll show what I the Gemini. And I guess actually what I could do is show you the effect of Quizlet. Actually, no, I'll, do, I'll show that in the, uh, the melee one. So look for the melee rotation because uh, for melee, you, you're actually running Quizlet. So, let's jump over and try the rotation.
Okay, so you get the idea there. And as well as that uh, that power return that you're seeing that you're getting back, I'm actually getting two ticks of power. Uh, the other tick I'm getting is because I'm running that Ally House Legends bot. So every time I use Arc Lightning and stuns the sparring targets, I get that 20k power back. So it's pretty much, uh, in, if you're running like solo content, or open world, or any kind of zero pool power, it's, it's literally impossible to run out of power with House of Legends bot because you're using Arc Lightning off every cooldown. But to get into the actual parsers, 1.3 mil just to set up without uh, strategy card procs. That's why you're missing a whole bunch of ticks, and that jumps up to 1.7 mil, 1.45, 1.6 mil, 1.5, 6, 5, 6, 4. Uh, so you're going to have a little bit of bias depending on how many strategy. It's just the 10 second parser bias with the strategy card procs, but I mean, you're looking at top tier AOE, range to AOE, perfectly safe max range. Sets up the PI itself. You get the extra supercharge from Tesla Ball. So. And you're sitting pretty, and then you, you know, you could always jump into a rotation with Circuit Breaker. So, say if I'm using Circuit Breaker, we're actually going to take off Gemini because Gemini is not realistic for one person. But I'll show you at least what Quizlet will do. So then, uh, so the second rotation, I'll clip with Circuit Breaker just so you can see what that Circuit Breaker damage will look like. So going back into our original parse, you can see the pet damage from Quizlet. And then as soon as I clip right here, we'll clip electrocute. You're gonna get all the pet damage on the eight targets. So just with one circuit breaker parse and quiz, you're looking at 2.2 mil in 10 seconds and that's where the supercharge you can use every 12 seconds and because of like extended supercharge and drop is like soul cloak if you're running that but you're just you're sitting pretty or gemini if you have like gem spam from healers and such but quizlet you're gonna have multiple eight targets in terms of damage so sitting pretty and that, that was even with a 36% crit chance. So it's you could have, there's much higher parses in the 50s, 40s. So 2.2, that's on the low side. Because if I would have got like a 53% crit rate like I did with uh, with the other one, that would have been sitting at like probably 2.4 or 2.5 mil in 10 seconds. Just with a simple circuit breaker. Which is, uh, if you don't know, circuit breaker would be a 55% damage increase for 12 seconds. With a 12 second cooldown, where Neo Venom Boost is only a 40% and it's a 45 second cooldown. Okay, so welcome to the precision side of the guide for electric. Now in terms of the spec, I'm only specking about, uh, was it like 404 skill points? I could do even less because I, I right now spec brawling and dueled for the both webmaster tree. So this spec would technically be about 380-ish so skill points. So I won't be putting anything else in just because I know the glitch skill points. I shouldn't be able to max out everything. But uh, let's touch on this. So obviously it's going to be weapon expert, critical attack chance, critical attack damage, everything into precision. In terms of iconics, you only need robot psychic because we're not using any of Venom boost or anything else. Super speed. Uh, now, if you want to do like a universal spec, because really with brawling, you can do uh, like melee, range. Uh, if you do do wield, you can spec single target as well. So you can take uh, phase dodge, all the critical nates to get a little bit of power back, dervish, tornado pull. So precision, it certainly is benefited by super speed. I mean, precision in general is. I mean, it's not like you haven't seen every single precision video on YouTube that has like, you know, dervish, vortex trap, you know, everything else, phase dodge. So, I mean, yes, you could do it. Electricity, you can also be flight, acro. I mean, yes, there is a little bit of a damage loss, but not really because of electric has so many 0 0.5 second cooldown powers, which I'll touch on in the loadout. For weapons, like I said, you're going to need all the Brawling Tree and Shrukum Star Mastery for AoE. And then for bow, you need to spec bow, because for, oops, not do a pistol, do a wield, you're going to need Flurry Shot Mastery and Explosive Shot Mastery. And then for... Martial arts, just to finish out the brawling tree. So you don't have to spec for both. I mean, if you, there are going to be certain builds, like say there's a boss that has uh, like a uh, trigon and QE is a perfect example. 
So if you are that boss, you're going to need both duels and brawling for that. Because say, uh, before the eye spawn, you'll just be you know flurry shotting res regular. But then when the eye spawn, you need to switch to AOE. You can still be piercing a target, but you're going to lose losing out on damage. So at that point, you switch to brawling, brawling until the eyes go away, and then back to duel for a single target flurry shot. So that's pretty much going to be the case for any kind of fight with adds that spawn periodically throughout the fight. So it is very beneficial to spec both weapon trees, if you can. And then whatever else if you had, just dump into might. So in terms of gear, blast adapter and weapon mod, like I said, it's going to be either brawling or dual wield. Head mod, you're going to have a couple of choices here. You could be supercharged uh, circuit breaker 3, or you could be critical wired. Uh, wired would be the weapon buff. Relentless Precision is going to be the neck mod. Back mod is going to be... I put Accelerate Tesla Ball in here because of how uh, the cooldowns work with my uh, brawling rotation. It won't really... It's not going to impact single target at all, but it's more helpful than, say, like Berserker or something like that. I'd rather have the extra 10% cooldown on that to line up. Chest mod is going to be Penetrating Strikes. Leg mod, nothing scales, so don't worry about it. Foot mod, you can have Tumbling Mastery. Hand mod, you're going to have Max Damage. And face mod, you would have precision in here. I can't, I don't have access to it in the test server, so I'm stuck with like the old Starro mods because we, we, I'd have to farm Legion bounties to be able to get those, and it's not not possible in test server, but normally that would be a precision uh, Legion. In your Elite Mode bonuses, bonuses you're going to have precision. I have C and D are just healing uh, for the moment. They're not. There's no C and D mods that really impact uh, precision DPS at all, so don't worry about it. Utility belt, you're going to have a trinket, father box, mother box are the top two. And then just your DPS trinket, orbital, and supply drop. Uh, you can also have the OMAC trinket if you want. Uh, now that we can get that on the Dr. Fate Bender, it's about 400. Uh, which token is it? Let me open up my menu and see. No, can't open it up here on test. And then my token show. Yeah, it's the Fate tokens. I just couldn't remember which one. So it's it's four hundred. It's either four hundred or four hundred fifty fate tokens for the Omac trinket, if you haven't already got it from the vault. So that's going to be very handy for precision DPS as well. And I mean, I some I see some people use like the bot clipping. The bot clipping is not going to be around for too much longer. Uh, that's going to be adjusted so that they can't be used in combat. But if you want, you can use the bot clipping as well. I do see that. Artifact wise. The standard, Transformation, Stratus, and Grenorm. And I the Gemini. So if when you're doing like a brawling build or, or even a single target build with adds, then you're going to be substituting Strategy card for I the Gemini because you have those 12 second cooldown procs. And because if it's just pure single target for one uh, Strategy card, it's not going to be that beneficial just for pure single target. That's much better for AoE. So in terms of a situation where you have AoE, then you'd knock out either, like, you could just still take strategy card, depending, because sometimes the ads are going to die quicker before even you can get a complete strategy card proc off. So, I mean, you're going to get, like, one or two ticks out of it, and then it's pointless. It looks better on the sparring targets, but in actual content, you, you'd uh, substitute Eye of the Gemini for that. Because you're still going to have the passive damage from Grim, and you'll see Grim also sets up the polarized PI for my interaction on Brawling. Like I said, those four artifacts, even if you don't have either Gemini, I mean, it's not a huge deal. It's going to be some damage loss in content. But as precision, the four artifacts you should be looking for, Transformation, Strat, Grim, and either Gemini. In terms of Augments, your Adaptive Augments are going to be whatever precision uh, episode it is. Currently for House of Legends, there is no Augments, so you'd just be wearing uh, the previous Legion ones. And your origin augments will be all pretty precision as well. Okay, so for melee and range build, they're both the exact same. There's no advantage to being close, mid-range, whatever. It's all the same distance with this loadout. Now, it is going to differ from what some people may see. So... 
uh, you'll see a lot of Warring Dervish builds. And while Warring Dervish is perfectly viable, for one, if you're not melee, you're losing damage. I mean, there's no damage. Uh, yes, you do save a bit of time on the animation, but so would you if you use like a 0.5 second power like Shockwave. I test the Spark Barrage. Spark Barrage is a little bit longer, plus it's projectile based. So if you were ranged, then you're dealing with like having to fire projectiles and then missing or not hitting anything or getting interrupted. So Shockwave is a better power. So if you're melee, sure, you could get some extra damage with Dervish, but I mean, it's the exact same animation duration as Shockwave. So you might as well be ranged where you're going to hit everything. Because there's going to be plenty of times where you're not going to be close enough to use Dervish, or why would you? You might as well be, it's Brawling Shoot Storm, you might, be, well, it might as well be mid-range or range, it's not going to impact you at all. So that's why I'm leaving Dervish off. The other reason why I'm leaving Arc Lightning off, Arc Lightning, yes, it does take advantage of it uh, splitting very well, but for one, I don't have much might spec, and for two, the animation is long, and for three, it's just not as needed for, pre uh, for precision. I have Tesla Ball, which is going to give me back some extra supercharge regen, and it does benefit from the non-splitting. Or, I wouldn't say non-splitting, but it splits uh, a lot better than any other power because of the way Tesla Ball works, as I showed in the, in the previous clip uh, on the might section. So, Tesla Ball, yes, it, it does split, but really it's not noticed at all. Same thing with like Art Lightning. It's just those, those two powers don't follow normal splitting rules. So all I have is this. This is why I use also uh, Accelerate Tesla Ball in my, in my back mod. So the rotation is just going to be basically left to right. I'm doing sh every every time I clip, I'm just using Shockwave to clip Brawling Shoot Star Mastery. It's a polarized PI, which my Grim sets up. So I'll also get the extra damage from that. And it's a power which can hit at max range. And the animation, as you'll see, is very... You know, it, it's very smooth with Brawling Shoot Star Mastery. So, like I said, th you're going to see plenty of diverse builds out there. This is why I said it's not absolutely required for you to be super speed as as, light, as uh, electric, because technically you could drop phase dodge and put flux in or something like that, or just you know not run it in general. You don't you don't necessarily need phase dodge. It just saves a little bit of animation time on wired. But other than that, you're just using shock waves until Tesla balls up, and then you're just basically clipping that with wired to continue your weapon buff combo. So let's show what the overall rotation is going to look like.
Okay, so you guys get the idea there. I wanted to show both um, three targets and eight targets. So the three targets, you're consistently around like 1.1 mil up to 1.24. And on eight targets, you're sitting at 1.4, 1.3, 1.6, 1.64, 1.5. Because uh, some of that's going to be strategy card bias. Some of the times that's going to be uh, Tesla ball, etc. So you're all we sitting around 325-ish you know, hits, 325 to 330. But very capable of rotation. And then obviously mixing in circuit breaker, you just got the chance to go through the roof anyway. So very beneficial rotation. One that hits at max range, one that you're always clipping with shockwaves, you're always doing some sort of damage. It's not like you know, I could sit here from range and do dervish, but dervish is gonna do nothing from range, and the animation is about the same as shockwave anyway. So I mean you could clip dervish pretty quickly, but I mean maybe like a few milliseconds faster than doing a shockwave, but shockwave is gonna hit you know, all eight targets in front of you, plus you got the polarized PI from having Grim on. So it's just, it's much more beneficial running this than, say, Dervish, because even if I was melee with Dervish, you still have that, you still can't use Dervish every time. You're dealing with the cooldown issue then. Then you're using, like, Arc Lightning or something, which has Arc Lightning will be even longer animation than Shockwave. So it just, I find it much more beneficial to do this. Plus, the higher your Mitre goal, like, I mean, that all that damage is with zero skill points into Mite. Like, I could put an extra, because, I mean, I've got 680 skill points on live, so I could put, I could pretty much max this tree out, uh, considering when I'm alive. But, I mean, so many so many of you mentioned in the comment section, like, oh, I don't have 680 skill points, so what's it like with lower damage? Well, I mean, this is, it is. So, if I'm getting, like, 1.6 mil and stuff, up, and 1.2 mil with zero skill points and might as electric, and I'm hitting shockwave each time, your damage is just going to go up. So... That's just something that uh, you have to look forward to. Because, I mean, even, even let's do this. Let's just do this for argument's sake. So now I've maxed it out. What was I, like 69k might or something before? Now I've got an extra, like, 12,000 might. And I'll do the exact same rotation. edit that out because that didn't go as well as I thought. Okay, for a single target for electric, uh, does follow with kind of the same philosophy with Tesla ball clip just to get A, the extra supercharged regen and B, uh, a little bit non-splitting. Technically, if you want in terms of like pure single target damage, Electrogenesis is going to do more damage, but uh, Tesla Ball is going to be more beneficial for you. Uh, this does hinge technically on super speed. I did mention before in the beginning precision, but uh, phase dodge does make this cleaner. You can technically clip with flux if, you didn't, if you're like flight or skimming or acro. Uh, that's not a problem. You could do flux instead of that. And then instead of dervish, you would just kind of continue on with flare shotting because you don't. There's not really a dervish substitute in terms of clipping uh, for ranged. Uh, there's no really ability you can jump cancel here. There's nothing else you would use to slow down because I mean, electric doesn't really have any single target abilities. I mean, even if you're hitting like overcharge or like Tesla blast or something, it just doesn't make a lot of sense as electric. You're just going to slow yourself down. You might as well continue on flare shotting. So just you know, use another power, another substitute, but. For super speed sake, we do have the ability to clip with uh, Burning Dervish every other time. And technically, if you're close to melee or something, you would get some extra damage. But we'll show you what it looks like here.
Okay, and you get the gist of it there for flurry shotting. I mean, if I would, uh, where did I start again? You know, if I would spend more than like two minutes every two weeks <laughs> on flurry shotting, I may be a bit more consistent with it. But I mean, you're still getting, you know, 69, 64, 65, 70, a couple 77s there, 67, 71. Uh, so that's that's even without circuit breaker. I mean, circuit breaker would be that 55% damage boost, and it's 12 seconds to send a new venom, which is 40 seconds at, at 45 second cooldown. So, I mean, circuit breaker and that you're easily up there in terms of single target, even getting close to say like a gadgets prec, where they're sitting at probably close to a million every 10 seconds, and with circuit breaker you're probably going to push like 80 90s. So, you certainly have the potential there for single target. Uh, it's you certainly could have the OMAC trinket again for the OMAC trinket would give you the 5% critical attack chance. You could do a bot clip as well because the second uh, the second flurry shot as you see after I do like Tesla ball waiting for Duros to come back, uh, I'm not, I can't clip that with anything. So technically you could do like a bot clip there to save like a fraction of a second. But like I said, uh, bot clipping won't be around for that much longer because it's, it's supposed to be locked to combat. But you have some options there, but at the same time, you're still sitting well with uh, in terms of single target damage without even using a supercharger, without even using like either Gemini. Like in, if you're an actual raid content, you got either Gemini, you got everyone else's sing everyone else's damage, you got every 12 seconds to refresh that compared to their 30 seconds if you're like in a gem span group, then you're laughing. <laughs>